All right, so this section we're putting all together, we're just finding the zeros, all different ways, factoring, graphing, quadratic formula, finding all the zeros. So to find all the zeros of this function, what I try to do, I always try to look at factoring. So I'm going to factor out a x. So then the second thing that I do is I check inside here, I have this quadratic. So I'm going to try to factor this quadratic. If it doesn't factor, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So first I'm going to factor by doing grouping. So factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. So factors of negative 6 that add up to 1 are um, 3 and 2. 3 and negative 2. So I'm going to write this as 6x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 1. So in here, I can factor this by grouping. So factors of this are 3x. And then I can write over 2x plus 1 right here. So the value that goes into here has to be a negative 1 in order to multiply negative 1 times these two and get negative 2x minus 1. So then I have this polynomial function, 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 times x. So this is factored. Now I can use this factoring, factored problem to find the zeros. So I could use the zero product property. This is equal to zero. Set this equal to zero. Set this equal to zero. So my zeros are one third because I set this equal to zero. Negative one half. This part and this part is zero. So I found all the zeros. So I would always first try to factor out. So y equals, now I'm going to factor out a negative 4 because I always want to have this leading coefficient be negative. So I have negative 4 and then also an x. And I'm going to have x squared minus 25 on the inside. So this is negative 4x. And this is difference of squares. So I have x minus 5, x plus 5. So I'm trying to find the zeros. So that's where y is equal to 0. And now I use the zero product property and set each one of these equal to 0. So that gives me x is 0, x is 5 and x is negative 5. Okay, for each equation state the number of complex roots and the possible number of real roots. So you're looking at the degree of the leading coefficient. So this one, the degree of this is 2. So that means complex wise, there's two roots. And then, since we know that a quadratic can have 0, 1, or 2 roots, if it has 1 root, it actually has a multiplicity of 2. So we're counting that as 2 roots because it's happening twice at the same location. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so the possible real roots is you can have 2 with zero imaginary or because this would count as two roots and this would count as two roots or you could have zero with two imaginary roots because imaginary roots always come in pairs they come in pairs and we know that by the imaginary root theorem which which reads that it comes in complex conjugates so now in letter B, we have an odd power. 
So an odd powered function has to cross through at least one time. So we're going to keep that in mind when we're, we're going to write the real roots. But I can tell by the degree that it has five complex roots. We know that it has to have at least one real. So the combinations, it could be one real. Therefore, you'd have four imaginary roots. Because the number of complex roots is the number of real roots plus the number of imaginary roots. You could have three real roots. In that case, you have two imaginary roots. And you could also have five real, which would give you zero imaginary roots. So odd powered polynomials have to have at least one real root. And the real root plus the imaginary have to add up to five, the degree. And you have to, and real and imaginary roots come in pairs. So they're going to be even numbered of imaginary roots. Okay, this is another odd function, odd powered function. So we know because it's degree three, it has three complex roots. So the roots could either be imaginary or real, but we know we have to have one real, which would give us two imaginary, or we could have three real, which would give us zero imaginary. And then over here we have degree four, so it has four complex roots. So you could have zero real and four imaginary. You could have two real, which would give you two imaginary. Or you could have all of them be real roots, therefore zero imaginary. And then down here, find all the zeros. So first I'm going to see if I can factor this. This looks like it might factor, not by greatest common factor, but I'm going to try grouping. It has four terms, so I can factor out a 2x squared right here and have x minus 4. And then I could factor out an 18 right here and have x minus 4. Ooh, actually, I could have factored out by greatest common factor, but it's not going to make a difference when I actually find the zeros. So I'm going to put these two together and write 2x squared plus 18 times x minus 4. Now, since this is equal to 0, I'm finding the zeros, I can use a zero product property and solve for x. So I have 2x squared plus 18 equals 0. So 2x squared equals negative 18, x squared equals negative 9, so x equals, I'm taking the square root of negative 9, so it's going to be plus or minus, and then the square root of 9 is 3, and then I'm going to have an i. And my other 0 is 4. So here are my zeros. There's 3, it makes sense because it's degree 3. I could also graph this polynomial and see that it crossed at 4 and then use my other one to get the imaginary ones. So I first try factoring. So I'm going to try factoring with this one again because there's four terms so I'm going to try it. If it doesn't I'm going to use my graphing calculator and see where it crosses the x-axis and work backwards. So I have x squared x plus 3. I can factor out a 2 and have 3x plus 2. 
Okay, so this one didn't factor. I was hoping it would, but it didn't. So it didn't factor how I wanted it to. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my calculator and I'm going to see where it crosses the x-axis. So when I graph this polynomial, it crosses the x-axis at negative 1. So I, have a, I already have a 0 of x equals negative 1. And there are no other real roots. So that means there's going to be other imaginary roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor by synthetic division to see what my remaining quadratic is going to be once I divide it by x plus 1 because negative 1 is a 0. So I'm going to write 1, 3, 6, 4, synthetic division, copy down the 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4, 0, which makes sense. This is a factor, so 0 is my remainder. So I'm left with the quadratic x squared plus 2x plus 4, and it's not going to factor, it's not going to have any real roots because you can tell from my, from my cubic that it only crosses once. So these are going to be imaginary. So I'm going to set this equal to zero and use the quadratic formula. So it's negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 4, all over 2. So it's negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 16 is negative 12 all over 2. So root negative 12 is 2 root 3i. And these 2's can reduce. So 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So negative 1 plus or minus root 3i. So those are my two zeros, and my last zero from up here was negative 1. So I have three zeros, which makes sense because it's a polynomial of degree 3. Two are com three are complex, and then these two are imaginary, and this one's real. Okay, and my last one. First, you could try to factor. So we know that this has four complex roots, so it's either going to have zero real, four imaginary, two real, two imaginary, or four imaginary, zero, re zero real. So the way I factored it was I used substitution. I saw this was degree four, this was degree two, and this was degree zero. So I subbed in u equals x squared. So then I had this line. Then I had a trinomial that could factor, so factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 11 were negative 12 and 1, so I factored by grouping. At the end, I have to set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0, and I substituted this back in. So I'm solving this, so I have x squared equals negative 1 fourth, so I'm going to take the square root. So it's going to be x equals plus or minus. I'm going to have an i, and the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So it's plus or minus 1 half i. And then I'm going to, I have x squared minus 3 equals 0. So x equals plus or minus root 3. So I have two real and two imaginary, which makes sense, that add up to my degree 4 complex. So there's all different ways that you can find roots. I would always first try to factor, then check your graphing calculator to see what the real roots are. Use division, synthetic division, to get a remaining quadratic and solve your quadratic by using the quadratic formula to get the other imaginary.